very young, six, seven, um, I was taken to not just farms, but a slaughterhouse. And I saw what was done to animals in the pursuit of uh, food. And th that absolutely shamed me. And I just, I, I, but it was inarticulate. I wasn't thinking, you know, in, in these circumstances, Mahatma Gandhi would, would do X, Y, or Z. It just, that wasn't part of the discourse in my brain. I was just, I was appalled at what um, I saw. So I think there was an appetite uh, for nonviolence. Life organized itself in some fairly standard uh, patterns over time, and we should understand those and not do violence to those. But within those patterns, within those dynamics, within those flows and processes, violence happens routinely because things have to eat other things in order to survive, in order to feed their uh, young. I understand why people may have uh, taken Darwin's notion that, or, or Hobbes's notion that, that then nature is violent in, in, in tooth and claw and uh, and that's intrinsically part of the system well it is but it doesn't mean that we have to knowingly uh, per, you know perpetrate violence on others and i think in 75 uh, james lovelock did a piece on the gaia hypothesis which you will know it may well be that other listeners don't but this notion that the planet earth is akin to an organism. It behaves very much uh, like an organism. And if you look at the atmosphere, just to take one example, there are chemicals that play the role of hormones in the human body and so on. And so he, he started to think like that and talk about that. And he attracted a great deal of anger from people who thought this was anthropomorphic or, or romantic or whatever. What's been extraordinary over time is that um, his thinking has increasingly become mainstream in science. People are beginning to realize that the planet's atmosphere and biosphere and oceans and so on in, uh, have been interconnected in all sorts of ways which we had no idea uh, about. When I think back to Gandhiji and I think about how he resisted the British Raj and how he used playfulness and humor uh, quite often uh, to provoke <laughs> you know, people to think differently. I would say he was one of the, the, the models of, of some of the stuff that I've done, which is designed to be provocative. I mean, I, I remember many, probably 25 years ago, I was described somewhere as a grit in the corporate oyster. And I quite like that term. <laughs> um, uh, uh, so, um, and, and you have to hold human beings. You have to hold yourself under tension in order to evolve, in order to properly consider the lessons uh, that life is trying to uh, teach us. And when I did the recall, I didn't, uh, you can't recall a management concept. Harvard Business Review, the editorial staff there, told me it was the first time uh, any management concept had ever been subject to a product recall, which you know is understood by automotive manufacturers or people who create things with dysfunctions and they have to take them back. Um, but I felt it was, a necessary provocation. It turned out to be better received and more timely than I had actually imagined. Um, so it was intuitive, but uh, overwhelmingly, I got extremely positive responses from people saying, actually, it's still a good idea, but we've really got to think about how it's uh, properly and effectively ap ap applied, because at the moment, it's not doing uh, what the original ambition was that it should do, which was to drive systemic change, to, to, to change the nature of economics, the way we value, the way we price, uh, to change almost the genetic code uh, of markets and business. You know, I've already declared that I'm sort of an optimist. I don't live on hope, but I do believe that our species, uh, when it backs itself into a corner, that sometimes when its greatest work is done. And I think we have backed, I, you know, I've said it before, but I, we've backed ourselves into the mother of all corners now. And it's partly economic and it's partly social, but critically it's the climate emergency. It's the planet emergency. It's the way in which the web of nature is literally unraveling uh, before our eyes. Last year in London, uh, as some of your listeners will uh, perhaps recall, a group of predominantly young people, but with it was multi-generational, Extinction Rebellion uh, came together and they did phenomenal work. They shut down uh, the center of London or key parts of the center of London for five or six days. 
And I was blown away by the way in which they managed to maintain their nonviolent discipline.